Hello guys, Ted Leginski, Motor City Spindle. And today we're gonna to tackle the topic, what is a spindle and more specifically, what is a CNC spindle? So what I got in front of me is a horizontal machining center spindle. Uh, we're gonna take a look at this unit, the unit next to it. We're gonna take a lot of looks at different spindles. Um, so let me tackle a couple things before we dive into it. Uh, let's talk about what we're gonna talk about. Uh, the topics of today, is uh, what are the different types of CNC spindles, what components make up CNC spindles, what industries are using these units, um, what are the different products that these different industries are manufacturing, um, what are the different applications, uses, and different styles of these units, and then we're also gonna dive into, you know, what are the most popular machine tools using CNC spindles today. All right, so first we're gonna take a look at the different components for CNC spindles. Um, one of the most important aspect of, of spindles is your spindle bearings. Uh, a lot of times we're dealing with both steel or ceramic. These are angular contact and these are sealed. Uh, we can get into the differences there. Obviously we're gonna be dealing with a lot of roller bearings and different components as well. But um, here is the spindle shaft. Now this is critical because obviously this is what the inner race of the bearings made and are, are mounted um, onto the spindle shaft. And these are installed into a spindle housing that we happen to have. Now this is out of a Chiron. This is a standard cartridge style spindle. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, but as you're looking at this particular cartridge style milling spindle, this is out of a DMG Mori. This does not have your motor windings um, and the housing that this particular cartridge fits into. On this particular deuce on unit, my hands are physically on the housing that the cartridge fits into. So if you further break this down and remove all the rear components, uh, you have your encoder, you have spacers, you have your rear bearings, here you have your rotor, um, all that is disassembled from this spindle. Um, and this is actually a motorized unit as well. So these units all get assembled together, um, they go inside of a housing, which can look like this unit, which is a very simple vertical machining center, or this particular unit, uh, which is a horizontal machining center. There's a lot of other components um, that, that go into this unit. Uh, for example, we have encoders. Uh, the encoder is, is internalized on this particular unit, but the way the encoder works, um, we have a unit here where we have 360 degrees of teeth on this particular unit and that's gonna tell us RPM and position. Really critical when you're machining and cutting chips. And then these, these units are gonna have typically one flag. So every time the, the encoder rotates, uh, it's gonna count not only those 360 degrees of rotation, but it's also gonna count RPM. Um, so that's the differences between these two particular units. Um, all the O-rings and seals and things um, are, are mostly interior uh, inside of this particular unit, uh, but we do have O-rings on, on the outside of this unit. Uh, taper, which is really critical um, on this particular spindle. Um, we'll get you some close-ups, but this is a capto taper. Uh, it's a polygon shape, one of the most difficult to, to requalify. And then on this particular unit, uh, we have a Cat 40 uh, style, which is one of the most common units out there. A lot of units we're repairing on a regular basis are the size Cat 30, 40, 50. Um, every once in a blue moon we see Cat 60, uh, which is very unusual, but those are monstrous units. I can show you that in a little bit. Um, and then conversely, if you switch over for the American Standard over to the metric, um, a lot of times end users are running HSK tool holders. So where this is a Cat 40, uh, they would be running an HSK 63. Now we're getting more and more HSK sizes out there for a variety of reasons. Again, we'll tackle that a little bit later, but there's a lot of HSK 40, there's HSK 50, HSK 63, and then as you get bigger, HSK 80 and uh, HSK 100. Um, so let's talk about um, what industries use CNC spindles. So being in the Motor City, being from Detroit, uh, one of the most obvious answers is automotive. Obviously, people talk about the big three. You got GM, Ford, and Chrysler. Um, of course, nationwide though, there's more and more car manufacturers 
manufacturing vehicles all over the country. Obviously, Honda's all over, uh, Toyota, Nissan, Hyundai, um, Tesla is doing a phenomenal job. Um, countless other other uh, companies, but, but those are some of the biggest players. And then we have all the tier one suppliers that are supplying components to these guys. So what exactly are they doing in the automotive industry? Well, what they're doing, um, powertrain, which is a term we frequently use for manufacturers who are making engines or transmissions, uh, they're cutting chips. So if you have your engine block, um, between your, your engine block and your cylinder, that's a surface that has to be uh, precision machined. Um, typically a million performing action that uh, that a spindle like this would perform. Um, also, you have to bore out your cylinders. There, there's countless other components that, that require other types of drilling, tapping, honing. Um, we'll get into all that a little bit. But, but that's what we're doing in the automotive field. But we're not just working on engines and transmissions. We're machining components for, for steering, for brakes, for chassis. Uh, the list goes on and on. Anywhere people are trying to manufacture a significant number of components. It can be thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of components um, that that later have to be assembled and put together with very precise geometry and uh, very precise uh, specifications. That's where you're going to get into high-end precision machining centers, turning center spindles, and grinding machine tool spindles. Of course, there, there's other spindle applications that get involved, but machining centers, turning centers, and grinding uh, really take up uh, the bulk of that. Outside of automotive, um, aerospace is a huge industry. When I think of aerospace, um, I think a lot of people think of the same company. Uh, we think of Boeing, we think of Lockheed Martin, um, we think of Northrop Grumman, uh, Honeywell, uh, all, all these big OEMs, um, SpaceX, uh, you know, Aerospace is, is a great industry, and what's really great about working with these companies is they're doing some of the most impressive stuff out there, uh, but a lot of times it's defense, um, and, and what are these people making? Uh, they're making airplanes, they're making jets, uh, they're making jet fighters, uh, we're making missiles, we're making bombs, um, we're making all kinds of cool components. Um, I've, I've been fortunate enough to travel the country and take a look at a lot of these manufacturing facilities uh, nationwide and uh, aerospace is one of my favorite industries to check out. Um, next, I'm gonna gloss over a few of them. Agriculture and heavy industry, those kind of fall one and the same in my book. Um, when I think about agriculture, I think about you know Caterpillar and John Deere. Uh, these guys are making huge components. And again, what are the spindles being used for? Um, well, they're manufacturing their engines, their brakes, their chassis, their components, um, all different types of components that have to be precision made. They have to be made over and over again and they have to all be assembled later under a very tight tolerance and geometry. Next, we're gonna talk about the several different types of spindles. And when I think of different types of spindles, a lot of times we're, we're talking about, you know, whether we're dealing with motorized or, or non-motorized spindles. And a major misconception, a lot of people think, or I hear them refer to spindles as motorized because it has an auxiliary motor and it's being powered by a servo or an AC-DC motor. When we're talking about motorized spindles, we're not talking about that. Um, I'm gonna put a couple things up on the screen to show you guys exactly what I'm talking about because I think uh, you know a picture paints a thousand words. But the motor for this particular unit is internal uh, to this housing. And this is a cartridge. This here is another cartridge spindle and although when this unit gets pulled out of the machine tool and it goes to us or the OEM or other companies, they're actually not going to get the motor windings either. Um, the stator is going to stay in the machine tool and the shaft router and in the front housing bore, that, that, that's going to come with us. Um, I think a great, a great little phrase I hear all the time is rotors rotate, stators are stationary. And a lot of times in cartridge spindles, your rotors um, are always gonna come to us with, with, with the spindle because they're mounted to the shaft, um, but the, the stator, uh, the motor windings are not always gonna come with them. Now, the spindle is not always motorized. It doesn't always come with a cartridge that has the housing or doesn't like this particular unit. Sometimes we'll deal with um, a block spindle. Now this is a foot mounted unit, which means it's gonna mount to the table similar to what you see here. It's gonna sit on a cross slide. Um, but these are some of the most uh, basic and simple units out there in the industry. We absolutely love them um, because of their simplicity. You don't really see these too much anymore because they're old, they're old technology, uh, they're transfer lines. But you know, 
this particular spindle shaft doesn't go with this block spindle. Um, but you're essentially going to have a block, uh, you're going to have your shaft, you're going to have some bearings, some spacers, and maybe a nut, and there's going to be a pulley that hangs off uh, to this particular unit. And your motor is going to drive that by either hanging in a, in a vertical or, or a horizontal position next to the spindle. Um, again, you're not seeing a ton of these units. We love them. Um, we do a lot of upgrades and stuff, but, but let me dive into this next unit. Um, one of my favorites in our techs, uh, we love this unit right here. This is a, uh, a gear driven spindle. Um, these units are used in a lot of different applications. You can have a gear that can engage and drive this unit um, on this surface or on this one here. And what's really critical about that is we're talking about torque values and removal rates, uh, metal removal rates, how, how quickly we're, um, we're cutting chips, depth of cut, all that good stuff we can get into. And when you're dealing with gear driven spindles, you can really get into a very deep um, metal removal rate uh, and different torque values. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later, probably in another video. Um, so these are some of the most basic units. Uh, another unit that you see out there all over the place uh, is belt driven. Uh, belt driven is simply that, it's belt driven with, with a pulley. So a pulley gets mounted onto the tail end of the spindle that actually is secured right onto the shaft. It is mounted in place, uh, typically with a keyway. And then again, you typically have a motor that is gonna, that is gonna run vertically above the spindle uh, that itself is gonna have a pulley attached to the shaft. So that when the motor rotates, it rotates the pulley. The belt in between the two pulleys rotates the, the other unit. Um, that's kind of a perfect segue into one of the last most popular machine tool spindles um, and that's your inline spindle. Um, again, if, if we take the pulley off of this unit and we put a servo motor directly behind it, that's when we're going to be dealing with an inline um, spindle. These are typically ran um, with, with two shafts from a servo motor to a spindle shaft that mate. And they're typically either a male to a female spline or coupling to coupling. A lot of times these are nylon couplings, Lovejoy couplings, um, but that really makes it up. Um, you, you have your motorized with different cartridge styles. Uh, you got your block spindle, you got your gear driven, you have your, your belt driven, and then you have your inline spindles. Now all these different spindles come in a, in a different variety of, of bearings, um, configurations uh, based on different metal removal rates, based on different RPMs, and in different specifications for exactly what you're manufacturing. Um, but look forward to diving into that topic a little bit more for you. All right, so when we're talking about CNC spindles, some of the most popular machine tools out there for application wise is certainly turning centers and grinding spindles. But I love CNC machining center spindles. Um, a lot of people say that the CNC spindle is the heart and soul of the machine tool. I absolutely agree. And what makes these machining center spindles different um, and turning centers and grinding spindles, uh, for the most part, uh, they have drawbars. Uh, I say that because we're starting to see different end users um, using grinding spindles and different spindles that are including drawbars. But in reality, that's really using a machining center spindle um, from its design and concept in a, in a different application. Now, what makes this a very profitable um, type of spindle to run is because it uses a tool holder to hold on to the cutting tool but it can do a tool change through an automatic tool changer and change from milling to drilling, tapping, um, honing. Uh, a lot of different um, machining operations can be changed. Um, sometimes, you know, damn near as fast as you can clap your hands and you can go to performing different types of machining operations. Um, this here on this particular unit um, is, is CAT 40. Um, so we have your spindle face with a cone taper and the the shaft here has the has the female taper. The the tool holder has the um, has the male taper um, that has a precision fit. Uh, you, ha you have your drive keys here. But what I really wanted to talk about was how the draw bars on these particular units work, and just give you a really uh, broad scope of, of how these units are working. So inside of this particular spindle, you have a draw bar shaft um, that has springs mounted on the OD and they're typically Belleville washers or coil springs. And when that spindle draw bar is actuated from the rear, that's gonna cause the gripper assemblies to, to grab or to release uh, the tool holder. So that's really critical again, so that if you're machining chips and you have several processes you have to cut, 
you're going to be able to go from one cutting operation to the other. And I thought it was kind of cool to put these out there because Cat 40 is one of the most popular uh, tapers you're going to see out there. Uh, very similar to, to ISO and ANSI. Uh, we get involved with Big Plus as well. Um, we'll tackle that a little bit. But I thought it was cool to show you that the equivalent of this American standard is, is HSK 63. Um, th these are essentially the same size. And then another tooling that we see out there quite prevalent is KM. Uh, very similar. This is a KM 63. There's a lot of different sizes. Uh, when you go from CAT 40, um, the next unit you see is CAT 50. And I want to talk about that because this is when you're, you're getting into some of the bigger boys and you're doing some, some heavy hogging and you're doing some serious metal removal rates. Um, some of the best machine tool out there uh, are, are running CAT 50, are running uh, HSK 100. This again, American standard, European style. They're all over the United States, you're seeing both. And then I thought this was kind of cool, kind of playing the shell game here. But if we go from CAT 40 to CAT 50, the next jump up is CAT 60. I've been working in the spindle industry since 98. Um, it was only in the last few years that we started doing spindles that are actually CAT 60. A lot of people have never seen them. Some people don't necessarily believe in it. You know, they think maybe it's Bigfoot, whatever, but pretty impressive stuff. I've heard about HSK 200, um, never seen it in application, but I uh, just wanted to show you some of the sizes. So we're gonna dive more into that. So look forward to showing it to you. Thanks guys.